Business Desk. Good morning. We are in Cusco, right in the historical centre pretty much. And we have been staying here for almost a week now whilst our van gets fixed and we're recovering a bit from the Selkham Thai Trek. It's been really good because it's given us a chance to get a bit ahead on work, which we never normally are. And we were a little bit worried about finding good accommodation, mainly because we have Oki with us. But check out this cozy cabin where we've been staying for the last few days. Hey buddy. Good morning. Well, he's just packing up. We're still getting used to like the directions of the wall. I <laughs> ran into something the other day, but. Yeah, the shape is a bit, a bit different. This is so cute and so different than the van. And look at the view out the window. And the best part is we're right in the middle of town, right near a lot of really good cafes and stuff. Because we haven't had the van, we've actually been eating out a lot more than normal. We're gonna go grab a coffee on the way out and then our van is ready to go and we are good to hit the road. So excited. Yeah. It just feels good to be back in our space that is organized. And it's good to go. Uh, yeah. And just for anyone wondering what ended up happening mechanically, the actual fix that they found for cutting the engine cutting out was the same as the one in Columbia, which was some humidity in the transmission connector. They've now shown me where that is so I can check it in the future. But we also got all the brakes fixed, the brake pads replaced, and as well a bit of rust treated because the mechanics here are so good and very good value for money. So. The van's like a new van and we are good to hit the road. When you lost So we're just filling up our water tanks, we just filled up our gas. We have now left Cusco and we are heading out of the city, back into elevation, back into the mountains. We are going to an area that has become very famous recently for tourism in the last few years. However, we, because we're in the van, we can go whenever we want. We're specifically leaving to go there in the afternoon to avoid all the crowds, which is one of the huge advantages of traveling in a van. thing about traveling Peru at this time of year is although it is winter, it's also their dry season, so it's been sunny almost every single day and gets quite warm in the middle of the day. Yeah, and we were also saying that we were working out pretty much since we've been in South America for almost six months. I think in total we've been raining on three days, so yeah, touch with that continues, but it's pretty yeah. incredible. And of course, we did say that when we were in Cusco, we were mostly doing work and just kind of relaxing and resting up. But we did explore the city a little bit and check out some of the markets. The San Pedro market is one of their oldest and biggest markets they have. It's pretty cool. And we did see something there that would put you off meat for life. So we have been driving on pretty rough gravel roads for probably an hour now and we are still at least an hour away but it has been absolutely stunning. Oki is on permanent lookout for farmers and alpacas and Lee is killing it with the drive. I think she should drive more often. I can. I'm good at it. She's pretty good at it. <laughs> Super stuff. 
damn it. Just your everyday llama crossing. Aki, what do you think, buddy? Look at this one. It's like they braided that into... Into its ears, yeah. yeah. It's the, uh, the oh, show no. one. <laughs> Look at Aki. So it is about three o'clock in the afternoon and because we didn't really get up that early to get to come here, we aren't gonna be able to do the Rainbow Mountain hike this afternoon because it'll be dark by the time that we get there. So we've decided to pull over and stop at this really beautiful wild camp spot that's actually listed on iOverlander. And everyone said that the parking lot where you start the trail, like the trailhead to the hike is really nothing special and it is still higher up, so. I think this is the absolute perfect spot to camp for the night. Aki this is can bloody beautiful. Aki can go for a swim. <laughs> hey buddy. <laughs> and we're gonna be sleeping beside some horses and some alpacas and llamas. Not too bad, eh? Pretty good. Home for another night. Better than the city. It's always better wild camping. I think Oki's happy to be out of the city again. Yeah. <sighs> also, it is warm here right now, but it's gonna get bloody cold because we are currently parked at 4,100 meters, and tomorrow the trailhead starts at 45, so at least we could be a few hundred meters lower while we sleep tonight. And so one thing I'd definitely say that we don't do enough lately, but we're trying to change that, is, you know, not feel that you have to push up, push on right until it's dark and actually sitting and in, enjoying campsites a bit more. So Lee's doing a bit of yoga. Oki's doing his own acro yoga. And then I think we're both gonna have a bit of a swim in the river while it's still hot, clean off. And then just, yeah, enjoy the night because this place is absolutely stunning. <laughs> One of the less glamorous parts of van life. I'm just making breakfast before dinner because after cooking dinner, I never feel like making breakfast for tomorrow. So if I do this first, then it's just like a bonus when it's done. And what you whipping up there, chef? Some overnight oats, which is a very, very easy recipe. You just take oatmeal. We like doing it with chia seeds, so oatmeal, chia seeds, any kind of milk that you use. We use soy milk or almond milk. And then you can just top it with other things. Or sometimes put walnuts in, sometimes we put coconut. Today, we treated ourselves and we have blueberries and strawberries as we found them at the market. So that's gonna be the flavor in ours this time. And for the main course? We are experimenting tonight. We've eaten a fair amount of oyster mushrooms while we were in Cusco and they were delicious. So we have them marinating at the moment, just in like a soy and teriyaki. And then we're just gonna do stir fry with peppers, eggplant, broccoli, tofu, spinach, onion, and I got a hot pepper. I think we may be in the way of the alpaca's nightly walk. Like, who the bleep are you? Now, what are you doing on my land? Oh, he's been so calm. Yeah, he's been good. good You're doing well, Ock. Good boy. Well, if I do say so myself, <laughs> I quite like it. I think she's outdone herself here, guys. This is delicious. I love the oyster mushrooms in there. They're only yeah. like a dollar fifty, so what a score! So we marinated those with soy and um, teriyaki, but then we made a paste from like tomato sauce, maple syrup, olive oil, peanut butter. And once we get the blend tech going again, I feel like we're going to be able to make mm. the most killer sauces ever. Mm. But it's getting cold. 
we're just gonna settle in for the night and see you guys tomorrow for the hike. See you in the morning. You stay, buddy. Good morning, mates. Buenos dias. Good morning. It is an absolutely another beautiful blue sky day. And we have just been relaxing this morning, taking it easy as we are in no rush. As we said yesterday, we want to get to Rainbow Mountain in the afternoon to avoid all the crowds. So I've had a nice little workout. Max started doing some work on the van. I'm just eating the overnight oats now that we made last night. So this is how they turned out. And they're absolutely delicious, especially with the strawberry and blueberry. Here you are, my love, before I eat them all. <laughs> Well, thank you. It's a bloody good batch this morning. How's your coffee? Coffee's good. I have to say it felt really weird making just one coffee this morning with mum being with us for the last few weeks. You know, she always wanted a coffee just as much as me. I enjoyed having someone, another coffee lover with us. And yeah, it's kind of sad for her not to be here anymore. And we absolutely love just how much love you guys gave her. And, you know, she read all the comments as well and wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone. And if you did watch a couple of weeks ago, mum mentioned that she was the one that got me into listening to audiobooks in the first place. She might have also mentioned another embarrassing story, but we don't need to talk about that. But as many of you will know by now, I absolutely love my audiobooks and we are so stoked that Audible is one of the main sponsors of this channel. They happen to be sponsoring today's video as well. And for the month of July, Audible has a deal going where for any Amazon Prime members, you can get your first three months for $4.95 a month, which is essentially like getting three months for the price of one. And what that gets you is one free audiobook and two audiobook originals from a changing list every month, and you can cancel at any time. To get that going, you can either go to audible.com forward slash Max and Lee or text Max and Lee to 500 500 and that will start your membership. As for a good recommendation, I highly recommend Beneath a Scarlet Sky by Mark Sullivan. It's based on a true story and it actually follows a teenage boy's journey through the World War II living in Italy. And for me, it's been such an eye opener because they call the Italian war the forgotten front in World War II. And to be honest, I had very little idea what went on there. And yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. It's definitely a bit sad in parts and I'm at such a crucial point at the moment, but it's getting later, so we have to go for a hike. So if you want to sign up, make sure you head to that link. Let me know if you've got any good book recommendations and Lee, let's hit the road. So this is now technically the back entrance to the Rainbow Mountain Trek. Most of the tourists come from the other side. And so now we're able to drive up pretty much a long way up. We, I think we only have to hike for about 30 minutes to an hour to get to the top. So we've made it to the base parking lot and as you can see, you might not be able to see, but right on top, those little dots, those are all people up there. I'm guessing that's the main lookout, but as Max just pointed out, like, it's look still, at this direction. <laughs> it's still bloody beautiful everywhere you look. Like you really see the reds and the greens. So I think plan B just to wait it out a little bit. Hopefully the crowds all go back because they've got to get back to Cusco, you know, in the next couple of hours. Yeah. And we've got no time constraints, so wait it out and head out there when it thins out. Perks of van life. It's really cool on this side of the mountain. It seems to only be local tourists that are coming up and they're all heading down. We just talked to one and he said it's pretty much empty out there. So we're going to hit the path, get up there. So we have mixed feelings about seeing Rainbow Mountain and that is because if you've been to Peru, you know, five to seven years ago and you didn't hear about this attraction, it's because it wasn't actually visible, it was covered by snow. So in part it's due to global warming that we can actually see the magnificent different colors on this mountain that used to not be visible. He's taking our footage for us. The cameraman is doing his own thing today, so he's uh Look at him. I don't know if you can see him all the way over there. Ark. Hey Ark! He normally sticks within like 10 meters of us and he's just decided he's I'm off. He's had enough of us. Bit of hockey time. 
So this is feeling like a little further than it looked. I never actually thought that we could see this place alone. And it's just us and the birds. I don't know where to go. You've been my shelter far too long. No one else was watching us. You and me, we were in love. Every single day we passed, I felt so much. If you can see over Max's left shoulder, our van is the only one left in the parking lot. And at the moment, we're hiding out of the wind a bit. But as Lee pointed out before, I have to say this is one place that we didn't have the highest expectations for. I think just because it has been so tourist and everything, but it really is magical and it's really cool to have it to ourselves. And it's just, I thought it would just be like one mountain that's beautiful, but really it's a 360, as you guys have seen, it's 360 degree, absolutely stunning scenery. So much better. Aki, you oh, killed oh, her, buddy. Oh. Up here. Good job! Oh, you did so good. You do good. Proud of you. We bloody made it. It feels so good to be back in the van and out of the wind just because it got really cold at the top of the mountain, but it was completely worth the effort. Yeah, and it was just one of those places that blew our expectations. In yeah. terms of the actual colours of Rainbow Mountain, we know that they're due to the mineral deposits, but that's kind of all we know. So if someone has a better explanation, put in the comments below. We'd love to read it and we'll also pin it so other people can get to read it too. Yeah, and we hope this video gave you a good idea of what it could be like for you if you decided to van life around Peru or just to show the advantages that you have by being in your own vehicle and being able to decide when you visit tourist destinations. Like now as well, we're just parked in this parking lot with a beautiful view. We're gonna stop and cook lunch and we don't have to go anywhere. We can sleep here if we want. Like, exactly. that's the coolest part, so. Definitely. Yeah. And if you're not already subscribed to this adventure, please hit the subscribe button. Join us as we continue on through South America. Hit the like if you enjoyed it and. We will see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. So we have mixed feelings about seeing Rainbow Mountain and... You said Rainbow. Cheers to that hike. <laughs> Let's that do it again. very awkward again. Start the cheers like as we're going out. Cheers is hard when I'm not cheersing. Okay, don't cheers then. We're alive!